Hey traders, welcome back. Today is October the 31st. It's Halloween. And uh, while my wife is manning the front door, I'm back here in the back office working on videos, trading videos. Uh, this is a little ditty that I think can be helpful for a lot of you. And I will uh, put a link that you can request a PDF version of this, a little bit cleaner PDF version of this chart if you so desire to have it. It's um, something that I think is a good checklist to start with when we build trades that can help in so many different facets to help us avoid trading the wrong things at the wrong time. So I wanted to just quickly go through it here, give you a little bit of an idea. Number one of obviously that we need to look at here, number one thing on the list uh, is choosing our underlying that we want to trade. And there's two primary things that we look at in choosing an underlying to go trade as primarily credit or theta sellers, uh, as that's how I trade at least, uh, there's a couple things that we generally want to look at. Number one is IV. Um, that's the IV rank, where it ranks relative to where it has been in the past, and then just IV in general. Generally, we're looking for an IV above 50%. That generally gives us enough premium to be able to generate the potential ROIs that we are looking for. So uh, on the step number one here, choosing an underlying to trade, we're looking for IV. And then we're looking for directional bias. Uh, we're looking for something that is bullish, bearish, or neutral, because that's obviously going to determine how we ultimately set up the trade. So number one, we choose the underlying asset that we want to trade. I do usually start that scan by just looking for high IV stocks. Number two on the list here is that we want to choose a time frame uh, for the trade. And you guys will notice in our live trading room that we have everything from zero DTE, those are day trades, everything out all the way out to 45 days. That's generally the window that we work within. 45 days on the long end of the spectrum, zero days or one day on the short end of the spectrum. You have to work through that for looking at the best ROI and the best risk reward ratio. We did some earnings trades last week and a lot of those uh, were good for a one day window. Uh, we did one on Apple and we had to roll it out for a week. Uh, there was not enough good risk reward ratio in a one day uh, earnings trade on Apple. So you have to look at that. Uh, obviously you guys understand that we would get more premium if we sold a 12 month option than if, than if we sold a one month option. That doesn't necessarily mean though that we're getting 12 times the premium and it doesn't mean that it's necessarily a better risk reward ratio. And so you have to find the time frame that is going to give you both the best ROI potential with the best risk reward ratio. Okay. Number three, uh, this is a mistake that I see being made all the time right here on number three. Is there an earnings announcement in your trade time frame? We look to do a trade over a week's period of time and lo and behold, two days into the trade, we get an earnings announcement because we did not bother to check that. We were not aware of that. So Earnings are a, a, a big issue in terms of building trades. They can be a surprise and we like to avoid surprises if we can when we trade. So number three, is there an earnings coming out in your time frame? Is there a Fed announcement in your time frame? Uh, we're just trying to look at this point and eliminate uh, on step number four, any systematic risk. Is there anything in general that is going on in the overall markets, that would be systematic risk, anything in general going on in the overall markets that might affect our trade within that time frame as well. Uh, if so, we need to be aware of that. Number five, is there a dividend payment coming during our trade time frame? We generally don't want to trade around that unless we are trading up specifically understanding that there will be a dividend play and that's something that we want to factor into our trade. So we're looking at basically just on <clears throat> number five, uh, making sure that we understand whether there is a dividend or not. And if so, is that going to be that potential move going to be incorporated into our plan of action? Number six right here, is there any other corporate action potentially going to be announced or taking place in our trade time frame? This is any non-systematic risk event. So for example, with Tesla, Tesla uh, may be in a window 
where we don't have the earnings announcement coming out, but we do have the sales figures coming out. And Tesla actually moves more on its sales figures, at least it has lately, than it does on its earnings announcement. So we're looking for any non-systematic risk. Anything that is potentially going to affect that company. Do they have a split coming up? Do they have a merger announcement coming up? Do they have a poison pill that they're fighting with a takeover artist, like a couple of trades that we're working in right now with Carl Icahn? Is there anything going on with the CEO? Is there anything with, uh, is it a drug or a pharmaceutical company? Are they in phase three clinical trials with the FDA? All kinds of things like that can come into play here to maybe throw a monkey wrench into our trades. So we look at all these items. If the answer is yes, that any of these things are happening, then we should probably consider trading something else. Probably not a trade that is appropriate for us. If the answer is no to all of these, no, nope, none of these things are taking place here, then we move on to our next step, which is, well, how are you going to trade it? Are you looking for a bullish, bearish, or neutral trade? If you're looking for a bullish trade over here, these are kind of the ways that we would approach it. You could buy calls, you could sell a naked put, you could uh, do a covered call, you could do a debit call debit spread, you could do a bull put spread, you could do a bull broken wing butterfly. These are basically the defaults. We can uh, expand on those obviously, but these are the main ones that we focus on. And the question is really, uh, you know, how confident are you in your bullish stance? Are you extremely confident, moderately confident, or slightly confident? If you were looking for a neutral trade right here, we would do the same approach, just depending on how confident you were in that trade. Same as if we were going to do a bearish approach right here, uh, we would approach it in a different manner, depending on the level of commitment or confidence that we would express or want to express in those trades. So this is a little spreadsheet, a little cheat sheet, if you will, that can sort of help you uh, not only find your underlying to trade, but help you select the trading strategy to pair with that underlying. As I said, if you would like a PDF version of this, I will uh, click my, I'll put my e-link, my, uh, I'll put my email, uh, in the uh, description box below, you just shoot me an email and say uh, free trade flow spreadsheet and I will shoot you a PDF version of it over to you at no cost. Hope that helps guys. We'll see you back in the trading room uh, for live trading this week very, very shortly. Sunday night right now. So just a few hours and we'll be back at it. Take care.